In morning sports, Spurs summer league coach Mitch Johnson has announced he's not going to suit up number one draft pick Jeremy Sohan for any games in Las Vegas. That's because he hasn't had a chance to fully work out after returning from COVID protocols. Sohan tested positive last week. He returned to practice facility this week. The Spurs staff doesn't want to take any chances. Second year player Joe Wieskamp will also be sidelined after rolling his ankle over a teammate's foot in the final practice Tuesday. Both will stay in Vegas with the team. One of the undrafted rookies that we'll be keeping an eye on during summer league play in Vegas is uh, Spurs undrafted rookie Dominic Barlow. After admitting he did not get that many college offers when he was in high school, Dominic chose a different route to get with the NBA. He signed with Overtime Elite, which is backed by such investors as Amazon's Jeff Bezos. The goal is to prepare teens for the NBA draft with guaranteed six-figure salaries. And that's after the forward was named the 2019-2020 High School Player of the Year. Just being able to get in the gym 24-7, uh, coaches, there's no restrictions. You know, in college, you have all the restrictions of how many hours you can be in the gym. But we, we could do whatever we wanted, really. And I locked in with the coaches. They came back at night in the morning to get shots with me, work out with me. So I feel like that is what helped me. After thinking he might go in the second round, it did not. Barlow has used that as motivation, pointing to the fact a second round pick like uh, Nikola Jojic uh, just signed a $270 million contract that and his seven foot three wingspan on that 610 forward. So the Spurs summer season tips off at 4 p.m. today. Cox Pavilion against Cleveland in Vegas. Then the team will play Golden State coming up on Sunday. Well, kind of a stunner. Rafael Nadal withdrew from the men's semifinals at Wimbledon just ahead of today's scheduled match against Nick Kyrgios. It's after tearing an abdominal muscle. The 22 time major champ says the pain he started experiencing about a week ago got worse during Wednesday's quarterfinal match against Taylor Fritz. Kyrgios will now face either Novak Djokovic or Cameron Nori in Sunday's championship match. President Biden awarded the Medal of Freedom to 17 recipients yesterday, including two Olympic athletes. Olympic gymnast Simone Biles became the U.S. person ever to receive the Medal of Freedom at just 25. The Medal of Freedom used by the president to recognize citizens who have made an especially meritorious contribution to the security or national interests of the U.S., world peace, or other significant public or private endeavors. And that's a look at morning sports. Very good. Time now, 442 and 79 degrees for now. Still ahead, we're gonna tell you about a simple tool from CPS Energy that will help you regulate your summer electric bill. And next, how other major retailers are offering major deals in response to Amazon's upcoming Prime Day. Welcome back. It is 445 with Amazon Prime Day just days away. Major retailers are offering their biggest deals of the summer. ABC's Becky Worley has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, with prices soaring, major retailers are about to launch some major summer sales. Target deal days start Monday. Amazon Prime Day runs Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. And other retailers like Walmart and Macy's will join in with their own deals. Every retailer had to jump in the pool uh, because Amazon made such a big deal out of Prime Day and it was very successful. And because of Amazon's power on the Internet, many other sites may match their price cuts, in some cases trying to beat Amazon by just a few cents. They figured out a way to invent a holiday in a period in the year, which was typically a retail slump, and it has become this retail sales bonanza. Each store offering savings across multiple categories. And coming up at 7 a.m., a simple way to find out when the items on your list actually go on sale. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. Your power bill is going up along with the higher temperatures. Well, on your sides, Marilyn Warrens has simple solutions to make those bills more manageable. 28 days so far of triple digit heat as your AC working overtime. And that means some scorching power bills. So what can you do to cool your costs? It's obvious, but effective. Experts say adjust your thermostat. CPS Energy recommends 78 degrees. Too warm for you? Even raising it a couple of degrees makes a difference. Even better? A programmable or smart thermostat can actually lower your heating and cooling bills by as much as 10% per year. Most smart thermostats use Wi-Fi, 
allowing you to remotely control your heating and cooling from your smartphone. 78 degrees will feel better if you use your ceiling fans. Ceiling fans not only cost very little to run, but when used with your air conditioning, you can actually raise your thermostat by about 4 degrees and feel just as cool. Remember you want your ceiling fan to run counterclockwise in summer. To check the direction, just stand directly under it and look up. It's easier to tell. Simple things can help lower your bill, like keeping your blinds and shades closed during the day, plugging cracks around windows and doors too. Try not to use appliances like the oven or clothes dryer during the hottest part of the day. And that AC, clean or replace your filters once a month. Check more often if you have pets. Your AC accounts for about half of your utility bill. To check your power use by the hour, log into your CPS Energy account and go to My Energy Portal. You may be able to pinpoint some other ways to chill your bill. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Good news for morning commuters. I'm seeing green all around the Alamo City right now. We are seeing some construction, though, that is causing some big slowdowns on I-35 uh, as you head up past a Schertz right now between Schertz and New Braunfels. Both directions, we do have active construction. Be advised. All right, we'll look out for that, and we will also watch out for the heat this weekend. Extreme heat, like hot on top of hot. I mean, this is beyond broil. This is almost like burning. Yeah, 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 and you know it is to the point where it is going to be dangerous. As well. mm -hmm. I mean, it has been for for some folks, but you know, just when we're getting those air temperatures up there, we're looking at 105 by Sunday. You know, that's that's ridiculous. And talking about electric bills, at least gas is coming down slightly. That helps. Yeah. I mean, every little bit helps, right? Yeah, yeah. I I had to fill up yesterday, and on 20 gallons saved about uh, seven and eight bucks. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it's like, hey, that you know. That's going right to the energy bill, but at least <laughs> saving a little bit. Yeah, so um, it, there, unfortunately, is just no relief in the next couple of days. We are just going to be, like Mark said, on broil and then some. 84 is what it feels like as of right now. And that's the other problem. I mean, not only is it so hot in the afternoons, but we're not cooling down, obviously, that much in the overnight hours. So you're still having to run the AC overnight. 85 is the heat index right now in Castorville as well as Canyon Lake. We are going to be staying in the upper 70s this morning, a uh, couple of clouds out there and more sunshine again. And then it heats up so, so quickly, already up to 92 at noon. Again, we're going for 102 later on this afternoon. Marilyn's story was she recorded that yesterday. That was day number 28, but we hit it again by the afternoon. Triple did it. So 29 days so far at 100. And the other problem, again, we're talking about the dew points, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. When you get below 60, that's when it's kind of pleasant. You know, you hop in a pool, if you were to hop out, no matter the temperature, you'd feel kind of chilled because the air is dry enough and your body is cooling itself efficiently. Well, when these numbers stay up in the mid 60s where they have been, that's why we're putting those heat index readings way up there above the air temperatures. And it's just that much harder to cool down everything. And that's going to be the situation again today. So 106 is the uh, forecast heat index here in town. 111 Catula, Victoria, 107 Carrizo Springs, Eagle Pass, 109. Yeah, blisteringly hot, not quite as high in portions of the hill country. That's why the heat advisory is not issued for portions of the hill country, but still obviously you got to watch it. So going into the weekend now, there are small, small little chances, little glitches in the atmosphere, even starting tomorrow afternoon. A couple of computer models are trying to scare up a stray shower or even a thunderstorm tomorrow afternoon. Very doubtful, however, but I mean, if something does pop up, fantastic. Uh, same thing on Sunday then, there's gonna be a very small chance for a couple of showers or even um, a, a stray thunderstorm in the afternoon. Then we go into next week, and that's when we see a slightly better chance. Again, this is kind of a broad brush painting this in, but a slightly better chance for a couple of stray showers or a thunderstorm and maybe shaving temperatures down just a little bit by the, uh, and again, we'll take anything, just like your thermostat, one or two degrees is gonna help out a lot. 92, part the cloudy skies today and then a high temperature up to 102 Again, the heat advisory goes into effect at noon for most all of the area about the southeastern two thirds of our viewing area from noon up until eight o'clock tomorrow. Again, weather service is indicated they're likely uh, issuing more heat advisories and even excessive heat warnings for parts of the area, especially on Sunday when we get up to 105. That's the actual air temperature on Sunday. 
a stray shower, <clears throat> maybe tomorrow, maybe Sunday. I don't even have a list for tomorrow, but slightly better chance midweek. Be a good neighbor. Check on your elderly neighbors that tend to be on a fixed income and pinch pennies here and there. So please, please, please uh, make sure everybody in your neighborhood is okay. Yeah, it's going to be a time that we all need to watch out for each other. Water, yeah. water, and more water. Yes. Absolutely. 452, about 79 degrees. And coming up next, a first look at the new season of The Bachelorette that starts Monday here on KSA. Five till right now, a Godfather actor has passed away and a new season of The Bachelorette premieres Monday. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. Brian Gacy. James Caan, the movie tough guy who starred in classic films including Elf, Thief this? and Misery, died on Wednesday. His family made the announcement on his Twitter account. But Khan was perhaps best known for playing Sonny Corleone in 1972's The Godfather. Khan was 82. Jesse Palmer says he's honored to be returning for the latest season of The Bachelorette after hosting The Bachelor earlier this year. But season 19 is going to be a little different, with two Bachelorettes entertaining 32 suitors vying for their attentions. And I think Gabby and Rachel deserve a ton of credit because they really took control of this thing. Uh, they made their own rules along the way. They were able to, to lean on each other and, and use each other for support a lot of the time. The Bachelorette premieres Monday, July 11th on ABC. British movie. filmmaker Alex Holder made headlines testifying before the House Committee investigating the Capitol riot, detailing what he says he saw while filming his documentary, chronicling the final weeks of the 2020 presidential campaign and the events of January 6th. Holder interviewed Donald Trump and his inner circle in the administration's final months. From my perspective, having met him and having interacted with him on three different occasions, it was quite clear that he became someone who believed in this lie that he himself had created. Holder's film, Unprecedented, debuts on Discovery Plus July 10th. And a couple of celebrity birthdays. Kevin Bacon is celebrating his 64th birthday. And this is us star Milo Ventimiglia turns 45. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. Right now, 456, 79 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, a look ahead at the memorial services and funerals for the three of the seven people killed during a 4th of July parade near Chicago. Plus, we're checking out a new feature from Netflix, Spatial Audio. That's coming up in your morning Tech Bites. And a quick look at the roads with Travis Guide there. Looking out there at Loop 410 at Broadway it appears to be some construction, but we're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, a man riding his bike is killed overnight. Now the search is on for a suspect. Plus the latest on two people found shot during an apartment fire on San Antonio's northwest side. Outside with live cam, get ready for extreme heat all weekend long. We're talking dangerous heat. How hot will it get? Mike Ostrave is standing by with more on a weather advisory from the National Weather Service. Good morning to you. It is 5 o'clock on your Friday. It is July 8th. Thanks for joining us. Yes, happy Friday. It's already been a hot week, and we're just going to have to prepare for more heat this weekend. How bad will it be, Mike Osterhage? Well, we hit 105 back in June one day, and we're looking at that again here on Sunday. Plus, we're going to be seeing, you know, 102 today. We're going to be seeing uh, even hotter temperatures the, uh, the next couple of days. So as far as the heat index as of right now, take a look. It feels like 82 degrees here in town, uh, 75 there at, well, I think that might be a not a correct reading there at Randolph. And then we are going to be seeing temperatures that will continue on through the uh, upper 70s into the 80s and we are going to be getting up to 92 already at noon and then 102 for a high temperature later on today. And we do have a heat advisory going to show you the the outline of that. That's going to be uh, 
in effect at noon up until 8 o'clock today for most all of the area and then more heat advisories as well as potentially uh, excessive heat warnings for parts of the area coming in here by Sunday because on top of those really hot temperatures, we're still going to have some humidity left over and so that's going to put those heat index or what it actually feels like to your body uh, in many spots up around 110 or even higher than that going into the weekend. So we'll talk about that and that slim chance, couple of very small chances for a shower here or there and maybe shaving off a few degrees by the middle of next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, good morning, sir. What's going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, we showed you this image before we went to commercial break. 410 at Broadway. There's been a lot of work taking place here along the loop, but what we are looking at this morning looks like it could be some paving work. Uh, not sure exactly how long this is going to last. We'll try to get some information from TxDOT as the morning does progress, but you can see that it's really not causing issues out there just yet because there's not a lot of folks out there, but keep this in mind 410 at Broadway. We are seeing some crews out there. Make sure that you move over. Slow down if you can, uh, because we do have them working to improve the roadway. So not the only spot that we're watching this morning. It does look like we saw our first crash. It was reported may have just cleared from our map. Loop 1604 in the northbound not far from West Military Drive. This is over near the west side of San Antonio, so keep that in mind. If you head out the door, we may see some flashing lights. Also, some work that's taking place near New Braunfels. Let's take a big drive over here all the way to 35, where Mark pointed this out a little bit earlier. There is a closure, and you'll notice it's the north and the southbound lanes where seen a little bit of a buildup. That's because there's an alternating closure in both directions between Selms Road and Ingle Road due to some paving work. Now, according to TxDOT, this should wrap around six in the morning, but it's really not causing, uh, hopefully won't be causing so much of a delay as the morning does progress. Let's go ahead and give you that wide look at the map and give you a view of the metro area. Just a lot of those active construction spots as usual. As morning does progress, we'll give you those updates. But for now, traveling into San Antonio from any of these communities, it's a good time to head out the door because nothing's really Really going to cause you to have any delays again just yet because not a lot of folks out there this early in the morning, but we'll watch things closely back here 410 at Broadway. Hopefully we'll have a better update and see this wrapping up in the next hour or so, but we'll give you those updates here on GMSA. Guys, lots to talk about. Thank you very much, Stephen Cavazos. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man riding a bike was killed overnight on the west side when someone driving a vehicle hit him. Happened around 10 last night at the intersection of Saunders and South Rosillo near South Sarzamora. Police say the suspect driving the vehicle ran a stop sign on South Rosillo and crashed right into the man. The victim was taken to a hospital where he died. SAPD says the suspect did not stop to help. Investigators are now reviewing security footage. No word yet on any arrests. And we have an update on a fire that ended with two people dead. We first told you about the fire on Waverly Avenue here on GMSA yesterday. And this morning, there is now a dual investigation after investigators found that the two people found dead inside were shot. Family members tell us that Raquel Martinez and Sergio Soto were killed in the home. The medical examiner has not officially yet said what killed them. Investigators returned to the scene after an autopsy showed that they were shot. Now we are told that Raquel is 51 years old, a U.S. citizen who recently moved back to Texas from Mexico to provide for two kids she left behind. Soto is 39 years old. The woman and her nephew shared the home. Everybody loved him. He, the whole world would love him he was he would help everybody all my family is devastating it's not one it's two we lost now raquel comes from a family of 13 siblings many of her relatives were camped out across the street from the house waiting for answers following the fire New testimony expected in the investigation into the school shooting in Uvalde. The Uvalde County Sheriff now agreeing to testify in front of a Texas House committee. This comes after that committee said Sheriff Ruben Nolasco refused to testify. So now the committee has filed a notice of deposition for the sheriff. In a statement to the Uvalde News leader, Nolasco said he believed he cooperated with the people he believed he needed to cooperate with, like the Texas Rangers. He also said he has nothing to hide. Nolasco is scheduled to testify coming up on Monday. Now to Highland Park, Illinois, where the community is banded together following the deadly July 4th parade shooting. Hundreds of people gathered last night for a candlelight vigil to honor the seven people killed ahead of the first funeral set for today. Here's ABC's Monica Sar Abdi. 
This morning, newly revealed police reports show several disturbing incidents involving the suspected Highland Park Parade shooter and his family. A report from April 2019 saying the suspect attempted to commit suicide by machete. Less than six months later, police were called to the home again after the suspect threatened to kill everyone in the household. The suspect turning over multiple weapons, including a 24-inch samurai sword. Police submitting this document declaring the suspect a clear and present danger. But the suspect's father, who sponsored his son's gun permit, tells ABC News he wasn't aware of the suicide attempt and believes the threat against his family was not genuine. Making threats to the family, I think it was taken out of context where it was like a, just a child outburst, whatever he was upset about. A candlelight vigil was held last night in Highland Park with the seven victims of Monday's rampage. Funeral services for three of them are scheduled today. We have each other. We will lean on each other. We will lift each other up. We're now learning more about one of the youngest survivors of the massacre, eight-year-old Cooper Roberts, who's in critical condition on a ventilator. As for the suspect's father, he says his son was raised with good morals. He says he does not regret sponsoring the gun permit, but says the system needs to be overhauled. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Time now, 507 and 78 degrees for now. Still ahead, we'll have more about Twitter's newest feature that allows users to co-author tweets. And find out about the latest on a local Vietnamese restaurant that had its license suspended due to roaches. And outside with live cam Friday morning. Glad you are with us. There's a lot of construction out there this morning and uh, you're seeing one of those spots there in the foreground. We're going to check back in with Stephen Cavazos coming up. 511, a Vietnamese Thai restaurant here in San Antonio back in business after having its license temporarily suspended due to a roach infestation. Tim Garber went behind the kitchen door to see if the place has been cleaned up. This week's BKD takes us to the northwest side where this Vietnamese and Thai restaurant Pho For You, located in the 10,700 block of Petranco, was recently shut down by the health department. When an inspector visited in late May, they found all kinds of problems, many of them insect related. In fact, there were so many live roaches and dead roaches in the establishment that the health inspector suspended their license and ordered a reinspection. The inspector noted dead roaches in the microwave, live roaches in a box of gloves. They were on shelves where foods were stored and being prepared. More roaches in the hand washing sink in the kitchen and in the coolers and cold hold units. I stopped by this week to see what they've done to deal with the infestation. Hi, I'm Tim with KSAT. I wanted to see if I could talk to you about the recent uh, report that you guys had. Were you able to, to get rid of the roaches and everything that were written up here? Yeah, we, I, we already call it the uh, from the pest control. This manager showed me a receipt for the exterminator they hired. He said the business just reopened two weeks ago. I called Metro Health to make sure they had reinstated the license. Yeah, it does look like it was reinstated. The restaurant ended up with a score of 75, but they hadn't posted that report as required. Instead, they still had this outdated report posted that shows they had a score of 90. You're supposed to have this one posted. So I have to wait for her to come back. That's what's behind the kitchen door this week. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. All right, several restaurants also got perfect scores to see who did a great job. You use your phone to scan the QR code and it'll take you right to our perfect scores database on KSAT.com. And time now, 513, and it is 78 degrees for now. Still ahead, details about Tesla's plans to open up superchargers for non-Tesla electric vehicles. And Netflix introduces spatial audio for some of, of its original programming. We're going to tell you how it works. Still not confident about which used car to buy? Nope. Why not ask the most confident person you know? My old high school coach. <sighs> this one's got talent. Toughness, the will to win. Let me coach you on this. Just say, show me the Carfax value. You'll get the most accurate price based on the vehicle's accident history. Look for me and stop overpaying. Shop at the all-new Carfax.com. Age before beauty? Why not both? 
visibly diminished wrinkled skin in just two days. New Crepe Corrector Lotion, only from Gold Bond. Championing your skin. Did you know that Febreze Aerofex uses 100% natural propellant? Cheaper aerosols use artificial propellants. That's why Febreze works differently. Plus, it eliminates odors with a water-based formula and no dyes. For freshness you'll enjoy. In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter is testing out a new feature to allow users to collaborate on tweets. It's called Co-Tweets, and it lets you invite another account to co-author a tweet with you, essentially sharing ownership of a single message. Both names will appear on the tweet as co-authors. Tesla confirms it's opening up its supercharger network to non-Tesla vehicles in the U.S. this year. The company has already done so in much of Europe. Customers will still need to download the Tesla app to use the feature. And Netflix has introduced spatial audio for some of its original programming, including the latest season of Stranger Things. The feature is designed to deliver a more immersive sound, especially for customers using headphones. No special surround sound or home theater equipment will be required. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 517, 78 degrees. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. But for now, let's go ahead and check in with Stephen. I saw some flashing lights out there off of McCullough. More construction. Uh, that has been the theme of the morning. So if your plans are going to take you through 410, you'll likely encounter those flashing lights. Let's go ahead and get a wide look at TransGuide, give you a look at what you can expect for your morning commute. There's 281 at Bassey looking a lot better than what we're seeing from these other shots at TransGuide. And it's definitely getting busier as the morning does progress. And minute by minute, we're getting closer to 6 a.m. So we we can expect the roads to be a busy place, but uh, again, right now, some of these shots aren't really picking up a lot of the construction, but be on the lookout. I called our friends at TransGuide and we will work to get some more information as the morning does go on. But for now, we are seeing a lot of that around town and big spot that you want to prepare for is over here on the north uh, up here up toward pardon me, New Braunfels, a closure that's alternating the I-35 north and southbound lanes. And what we can expect there is some paving work that's been taking place overnight. That's actually between Psalms Road and Ingle Road, and that should be wrapping at 6 a.m. But that road work is going to continue, of course, until the weekend. Take a look at what's happening right over here. at loop 1604 in the north central side of San Antonio. Camera work actually taking place. That actually started Wednesday, but should be wrapping up on Saturday. That's July 9th. It's from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. During that time, it's the right westbound loop 1604 main lanes that are going to be impacted from Trailcrest Street to Theater Boulevard. So, of course, always plan ahead. Wondering if we can bring up that QR code right now. And it looks like we're not going to be able to, but no worries. We do have this information on our website, ksat.com slash traffic. Just remember, scroll to the bottom of the page and we'll also do an updated list of all these closures, but there's a lot to talk about for a Friday. I'm intrigued by Seriously. text dot doing camera work. It's almost like, hey, Hal, yeah. move to the left a little. <laughs> Click. <Yeah. laughs> Everybody's see even their posing. safety vests out maybe there. We'll, maybe we'll catch them on camera. <laughs> maybe, maybe we will. Maybe, maybe we will. Okay, we'll see. Thank oh, you, Stephen. Yeah. That's a pretty picture behind you, but Very it reminds cool. me of the heat, though. It does, because it almost looks like it, it's kind of on the Sky's on fire right there. Sunset uh, from yesterday. Yeah, gorgeous, but that's what I think it's going to uh, feel like that we are basically almost on the sun this weekend because it is, it's is—it's been very, very hot. It's going to actually get hotter this weekend. Some of the hottest we've seen around here. And, and the difference being, Compared to June, we're still going to have humidity in the afternoon. So then the apparent temperature, the, what it feels like, the heat index, as we call it, is going to be very high this weekend. Uh, not really seeing the glow of the sunrise as of yet, looking off there to the uh, northeast. Heat index right now, what it feels like is 85 in Castroville, 83 Canyon Lake, 82 out there at the airport. And we are going to be, again, dealing with just some blazing hot temperatures again and then getting hotter this weekend. So we'll stay in the upper 70s this morning. A couple of clouds out. Out there same basic temperature profile as the sky conditions as the past couple of days we'll see a lot more sunshine by late morning noon 92 degrees and add 10 to that 102 for a high temperature later today still just to put it in perspective the average high is 94 so eight degrees above average and that seems to be just the, the norm these days, basically. The other problem is I was talking about, we still have humidity left over in the afternoon. It usually goes through that, that 24 hour cycle where it's higher in the morning and then drops down. But uh, back in June, we were getting those temperatures well up into the hundreds. We were dropping below the 60 degree mark and getting in the fifties. And that's what, because drier air heats up more easily than moist air does. And so that's why those temperatures were popping up. And now we're keeping some of this humidity around and that's going to be the case. It looks like into the weekend. So we 
will have those heat index readings that are just going to be intolerable basically 106 is the forecast heat index today in town same thing Pleasanton 105 New Braunfels and then getting up to the 110 range and this is why heat advisories have been issued for parts of the year you're going to show you that in just a second here's what the uh, computer models are looking like this weekend now tomorrow their couple of models are trying to scare up a stray shower or two primarily in the hill country um, if you get one or two of them fantastic very, very few and far between. Same thing then on Sunday. We're still looking at and kind of as I was saying yesterday, kind of ironic that we're going to be seeing some of the hottest temperatures on Sunday, but yet still a very small chance. And again, this model tends to, you know, kind of broad brush things. So one or two of them out there, a stray shower or two in the evening hours on Sunday. Nothing Monday, nothing Tuesday. Then we start to see those subtle changes. Shave a couple of degrees off temperatures by Wednesday, late Tuesday, Wednesday, and a couple of showers. Again, that tends to broad brush things, but a couple of those showers around here Wednesday and maybe even into a Thursday. And it's not a good chance, but at least there's a small chance of something. So just keep your fingers crossed while you're suffering through the heat this weekend. 92 degrees, partly cloudy skies at noon today and 102 high temperature. Again, heat index add four, five, six degrees to a lot of these numbers around here. The heat advisory from noon up until eight o'clock for the eastern two thirds of our area, we'll call it not in the hill country. But again, you know, it's just hitting a certain number, a couple of different numbers as far as temperature, heat index and everything. So just take it easy no matter where you are in our viewing area. And it gets hotter this weekend, 105 on Sunday. Temperatures still blazing starting off the week, but upper 90s by midweek. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mike. 523, 78 degrees right now. Up next in your morning spotlight, Journey founder talks about the band's 15th album, plus a preview of the new Clerks movie. You likely know Journey's classic hit song, Don't Stop Believin'. But now the band has a new album out today. CNN's Rick Damagella, that's Mike singing, has that story in the Hollywood Minute. Journey performing You Got the Best of Me from the band's new album, Freedom. The album was recorded remotely across multiple time zones during the pandemic. Journey founder and guitarist Neil Sean is very proud of the record. I think, you know, we make a, a very, you know, in time ballad statement that holds up, I think, next to some of our greatest records we've ever made. Uh, Escape, you know, Frontiers. Um, we've traveled in this to some new areas, um, you know, with the funk, heavier funk rock. What's the movie going to be about? It's about him working here. Meta. It's a movie within a movie in Clerks 3. The gang from Quick Stop rally around Clerk Randall after he suffers a heart attack and vows to make a movie about the people of the New Jersey convenience store. Clerks 3 opens for business in September. Thunder, feel the thunder. Lightning and the thunder. Imagine Dragons are hoarding diamonds. The Recording Industry Association of America says the band's 2017 hit Thunder has achieved diamond status for sales and streams equaling 10 million units, making it the band's fourth song to do so. Feeling the thunder in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. 527, 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, George Floyd's family demanding more after ex-officer Derek Chauvin was sentenced to additional prison time. We're going to have the latest on the case. And the price to mail letters and packages via USPS is going up again. We'll tell you how much more you'll have to pay after this weekend. Plus... It's a Fredericksburg winery with a 4,000 pound rhino on it. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. We introduce you to Blake and the mission behind this preserve. Making headlines this morning, the string of cases related to the murder of George Floyd continues as ex-officer Derek Chauvin gets more federal prison time. And we've seen triple digits almost all week and this weekend will be no different. In fact, it's gonna be even hotter. Good morning to you. It is Friday, July 8th.
Happy Friday. That's the good news. Uh, the bad news, I guess, for a lot of us is the heat we will face over the weekend. That sizzling sound out there is the pavement for sure this weekend, especially in the afternoons. He said, Mike, it's going to be extreme pretty much all afternoon, all weekend long. Yeah, really starting with uh, today and hence the reason for the, the heat. And we always point that out. That's kind of the yes, sir. We appear to be having some major microphone issues for you. Is it Mike? Are you guys hearing that too? Can you hear me at all on the microphone? Yeah, or? We, can we can now, but just cutting it out. Let's go ahead, just to be safe, let's go ahead and go to traffic and we'll switch you out. All right, uh, while well, we give Mike some time to get adjusted here, let's take a look at 35 Ben Zingelman. We are seeing that traffic still moving without any trouble at this point, but let's go ahead and get a wider look at TransGuide and what you can expect for this yes, morning one. commute. I-10 at Camp Bullis, not really a lot going on there. There's 37 at Carolina. Few more folks getting out there this early in the morning, but always make sure that you take care of yourself uh, when you're driving on the roadways because we do have a few things out there to be on the lookout for. 410 and McCullough, as we mentioned, there's a lot of work taking place there, but as we get a wide look at the map. We're really just only seeing a lot of those active construction spots and you can see one that we've been talking about throughout the morning over here off 35 in the southbound lanes uh, and northbound lanes. Keep that in mind between Psalms Road and Ingle Road. Now this is because crews are working on the pavement there and that should be wrapping within the next half hour or so, but we'll keep our fingers crossed and keep you posted. But right now we are seeing some of those slowdowns. May want to look for those alternative routes if your commute is going to take you through there in the next few minutes. We told you about some camera work, but back here on TransGuy looks like things are moving just fine, but I-35 at FM 306. There's a lot going on to talk about, but we're going to have more coming up a little bit later on. I believe we're going to head back to Mike or the anchors. Yeah, Mike, I think we're going to come back to you in just a bit, but he's all set up with a microphone. Right, new this morning as temperatures are expected to soar well past 100 degrees this weekend. Cooling centers around town will be opening those to those needing to escape the extreme heat. All right, Jonathan Cotto joins us live now with the details. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Mark. Listen, it's going to be a very hot next couple of days. And there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be looking for a safe and cold place to ride out this heat wave. And luckily for them, there's going to be a number of cooling centers open for them to head over to. Now, we know the city of San Antonio will be opening its cooling centers this weekend and into next week. And as we brace for the triple digits, city officials are encouraging everyone to limit outdoor activity. If your job is outdoors, take breaks in the shade as often as possible. Stay hydrated, drink lots of water, don't leave a child or pet in the car, and make sure to check on the elderly and those with medical conditions. Now, some of the cooling centers are the Central Library on 600 Soledad, the Carver Library on 3350 East Commerce Street, and the Cody Branch Library on Vance Jackson. Now, the cooling centers will be operating during regular business hours. For a complete list of those centers, you can head on over to our website, kset.com. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSET 12 News. All right, I think we got our microphone issue uh, taken care of temporarily here. 79 degrees right now, and I was talking about the uh, amount of moisture in the atmosphere. The dew point is up even this morning. We've got a wind out of the uh, south. Right hey, Mike, stand by one second. I'm going to let the booth know. He's on guest one, guest just one. to make sure, just to verify. If you guys could punch that up real quick, because I still can't completely hear him. Guest one? Guest one. Be on. Okay. So, All right. Okay. We're, we're going to try to iron this out, Mike. What, folks, why don't we move, move on to page 22? 22, 22. We'll come back to you, Mike. Okay. We'll try and get it all figured out here in just a moment. All right. We're moving on to local news. The parents of a student who was shot but survived the massacre at Robb Elementary say they're in need of more financial assistance. In reaction, State Senator Roland Gutierrez and Uvalde Mayor Don McLaughlin have asked the Texas Department of Emergency Management to take over victim services from the Uvalde District Attorney. Now, through the Victims of a Violent Crime Act, families can get a maximum of $50,000. The family we spoke to wished to stay anonymous, but they say they've only received $1,400. We're lost. We don't know who to ask. We don't know where to go to. But our savings is already gone. <laughs> almost gone. So I mean, like I was saying earlier, I gotta, I gotta get back to work. And as for the Rob School Fund that's collecting money for families, Senator Gutierrez's office says those funds will not be distributed until August or September. 
The family George Floyd reacting the news that his murderer will spend more time in prison. The latest sentence is for a federal charge. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, it doesn't end the string of court cases tied to the killing. I want to be able to ask him why. Why did he do that? Why did he put his knee on my brother's neck? That's the brother of George Floyd. Reacting to the news, Derek Chauvin will serve additional time behind bars. The former Minneapolis police officer was sentenced in federal court yesterday for violating Floyd's civil rights. He had pleaded guilty last December. He's also in prison for state charges. Under Minnesota law, he was eligible for supervised release in 15 years. Now he'll serve a concurrent 21 years for the federal charge minus time served. That's between what the defense and prosecution had requested. I wish she would have just probably said that how sorry he was, but that's not going to bring my brother back. Chauvin did not apologize to the Floyd family during his sentencing. You didn't see anything that really resembled an apology uh, to these families or sympathy for them. He did, however, wish George Floyd's children well, and he said this a year ago. Do you want to give my condolences to the Floyd family? Chauvin is appealing his murder conviction. He also has pleaded guilty to violating the civil rights of a 14-year-old boy in 2017 by using excessive force. He faces civil suits for that and another incident. A stunning lack of empathy today. Um, I hope that's not the pattern that we continue to see as some of the other sentences are set forth. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. And American Airlines has agreed to a premium pay deal with its pilots. It comes in the wake of a scheduling glitch that left thousands of cockpits understaffed. A computer malfunction in the airline scheduling program Saturday allowed pilots to take time off this month when the airline was already counting on them to fly. According to the pilots union at American, the snafu left upwards of 12,000 flights without one or both required pilots. Now the airline has agreed to pay its pilots triple their normal rate to fly those flights. 538, about 78 degrees. And are your kids bored at home? We're going to tell you about McDonald's new virtual camp for kids. And next, how an old Southside rodeo venue is getting a new life. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 78 degrees for now. We'll be checking in with Mike later on. He had some microphone issues earlier, but we'll be listening to him very soon. Old Southside Rodeo Venue getting a new life. A local, local nonprofit is renovating the old Charo Ranch off South Zarzamora Road. The plan is to host rodeos and other events, but as our RJ Marcus tells us, it will also be a free place for children to raise livestock and connect with the South Texas cattle culture. I used to drive by here. I rode my bike here as a kid. Born and raised on the South Side, Fabio Acosta knows a thing or two about rodeos and raising livestock. Four years ago, he founded the San Antonio Stockyards Historical Society. Our main mission is to promote awareness to a forgotten industry that helped create pretty much Texas. Acosta recently bought this old Chata ranch off South Zarzamora. His nonprofit is renovating these stables and pens to support local agricultural organizations like 4-H and Future Farmers of America. And we want to be able to provide stalling of the 29 stalls that are on this property. They're being refurbished and offer those up to underprivileged kids that are qualified. Jerry King is one of the Historical Society's board members. He says that this gives children on the South Side a new place to raise a show animal. If they're in smaller towns, most of them folks come from a, a farm type life area. Whereas if you're close to San Antonio, there's no place to do it. When we stopped by, we met recent Madison graduate Ryan Villarreal, who is helping clear the site and plans to become a veterinarian. The hope is for him to return to help younger kids interested in this field. Stockyards was a big, big part of early San Antonio, and we want to keep that memory alive as well. There's about 50,000 underprivileged kids throughout Texas and the United States who do not have access to any kind of program because they cannot afford it. And Acosta said that the goal is to get kids raising livestock in some of these stables by this September, and the Historical Society will continue to raise funds to renovate this entire facility. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. 543 on your Friday, 78 degrees. And coming up next, it will cost you a little more to mail your letters after this weekend. We're going to tell you about the price hikes from the U.S. Postal Service. 
Hi, good morning. The time now, 545. In your morning consumer headlines, mailing off a letter the traditional way will cost you a little more starting this weekend. The U.S. Postal Service is raising the price of postage on Sunday. It will cost you 60 cents to buy a first-class mail forever stamp, a slight change of only 2 cents per stamp. The prices for domestic postcards and sending an international letter are also going up. The USPS points to inflation and increased operating expenses as a reason for the price hike. McDonald's giving your kids a chance to go to summer camp without leaving home. The fast food chain has opened virtual doors to Camp McDonald's this week. The company says for 27 days in July, anyone can experience its camp. All you have to do is download the McDonald's app. Campers get access to food deals, menu hacks, and limited edition merchandise. They can also attend music performances with different artists once a week. Cam McDonald's ends coming up on July 31st. And with people cooped up at home during the pandemic, the video game industry enjoyed massive growth. But thanks to inflation, the gaming market is now expected to contract for the first time since 2015. Now, market research firm says the industry will experience a 1.2% decline this year as the cost of living goes up. People will likely have less and less money for entertainment. However, last year the industry was still worth $191 billion. Let's check on traffic at 547. Here's Steven Cavazos. Hey, good morning, Mark and Steph. Well, we are still seeing those flashing lights there at 410. Let's get a wider look at Trans Guide, show you what's going on there. Uh, we are seeing some slow moving traffic, and it does look like we have some of those barrels that are up as crews are working to improve the roadways. But here's the thing Texas has not listed this location in terms of what's being done, the work that's being done there. All that we know right now is that it started overnight sometime around 730. So we are seeing just work continuing and obviously. Obviously, it is causing a slowdown for traffic in that area of 410 at McCullough, but not the only slowdown we've spotted. We've told you about this and we're still watching it up here off 35 near New Braunfels. Now we know that work is being done there, paving work that started overnight and should be wrapping according to TxDOT within the next few minutes or so, but we are seeing some improvements with the slowdown. Keep in mind though, the closure I-35 in both directions is going to be closed right now due to that paving work. That's between Salms Road and Ingle Road, and that should be wrapping again at 6 a.m. So hopefully we'll have a better update as we get closer to that hour, but still looking ahead to the weekend work that's being done here. Survey work over off the northeast side of 35 uh, in San Antonio that started on Thursday and will be wrapping up on Sunday, July 10th. It's from nine in the evening to five in the morning. So during that time, expect the right southbound lane closure between Judson Road and O'Connor Road. Always make sure that you plan ahead. So back here on Transguide, hopefully we'll have a better update in the next few minutes, but it does look like slow moving traffic there at loop 410 guys. No bueno. No. no bueno. No bueno. <laughs> no. Not now, at least. And the heat is no bueno for sure. Yeah. Mike Ostrage is here with uh, what we started as a lovely yeah. picture. Somebody's picture yeah. perfect sunset. I think the dog is wondering when's the <laughs> when's the cool air going to be getting here. Yeah. It is, right? yeah, great picture. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Um, you know, pets, people, everybody, you got to take it easy. I, you know, we've been suffering through all the triple digit temperatures for uh, it seems like forever, and it is going to get hotter this weekend. So you really, really have to watch out. No glow of the uh, sunrise as of yet. We've got a couple of clouds hanging around here. It feels like 82 Hondo Castroville, the airport. 83 right now at Canyon Lake. Uh, 82 also is what it feels like in Pleasanton. Temperatures are in the upper 70s, the actual air temperature, and we are going to have a couple of clouds around this morning as we do right now, and then get up in through the 80s. Once that sun comes up, it's going to heat up fairly quickly. 92 at noon and then 102 for a high temperature later on today. And then on top of that, we're still going to have some of that humidity around here. And that's the problem because, you know, a lot of times we see, again, we talk about dew points, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere in the afternoons like back when we hit 105 back in June, the dew points get down below 50. So it is kind of comfortable in the shade. Well, these numbers are still going to be hanging in the low 60s around here. Just enough to add, add insult to injury is the best way to put it and put those heat index readings 105, uh, 110 or higher than that, especially down around Catula 107 in uh, Carrizo Springs for a forecast heat index later on today. What it feels like to your body basically how inefficiently your body cools itself. There's no room for the, the perspiration to go to, to cool yourself down, so you really got to take it easy. All right, 
Nothing going on this afternoon, nothing going on tomorrow morning. Tomorrow afternoon, a couple of computer models are trying to scare up a stray shower up primarily in the hill country. One or two of those. If you get one, don't count on it, but if you get one or two of those, consider yourself very lucky. Lucky. Then same thing on Sunday in the afternoon. There is the chance and again, this model tends to kind of, you know, broad brush things in here, but one or two of those showers to maybe pop up around the area. Again, I wouldn't really count on it. That would go in into the evening hours. Then we head into the middle part of the week after a very hot start to next week. And by Wednesday, perhaps one or two of those showers are going to be popping up around here slightly. I think a slightly better chance Wednesday and slightly lower temperatures on Wednesday as well. Still well up in the upper 90s, but just not in the low hundreds. So got to take <laughs> anything will help out 92 at noon, partly cloudy skies. 102 degrees for a high temperature today. Again, the heat index is going to be well above 105. Heat advisories going to affect at noon up until 8 o'clock. Not including the hill country. That doesn't mean it's not going to be blazing hot out there, but just doesn't hit the criteria. Just that, uh, you know, whatever that threshold is for those heat advisories. And then heat advisories, heat uh, warnings, excessive heat warnings are likely this weekend, 105 on Sunday. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, again, just the air temperature. Humidity is going to make it feel like 110 and hotter than that in many places. Oh, folks, just stay inside if you can. Yes. Right. For, the, for those who have to work in it, though, uh, take all of the precautions yep. that you need to. Yes. And more. 552, 78 degrees. Glad you're with us. And today, Chris Hemsworth is back in Thor Love and Thunder along with Natalie Portman. We're going to hear from the actors in the special preview. Next. But for first, your lottery numbers pick three, six, seven, nine, Fireball two, daily four numbers, zero, four, zero, five, Fireball three. Looking at cash five, 10, 16, 19, 20, 33, Texas two step, one, two, 11, 22, bonus ball eight. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're following the breaking news on former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, shot while giving a speech and a suspect now in custody. We're going to have the latest on that investigation. And the big monthly jobs report is out this morning, a key indicator of where the economy might be headed and if a recession may be coming. That and so much more right here on GMA. He reclaimed his title the one and only Thor. Oh, spoke too soon. Jane? Chris Hemsworth is back, but someone else wields the power and name of the mighty Thor. What's it been like, three, four years? <laughs> Eight years, seven months and six days, give or take. Thor Love and Thunder marks Natalie Portman's return to the franchise after 2013's Thor The Dark World. To say that Jane was gonna become the mighty Thor in this one was really, really just an incredible opportunity and, and really like a once in a lifetime possibility. So that's the ex-girlfriend, is it? The old ex-girlfriend. Judy Foster. Jane Foster. The one that got away. The one that got away. Yeah, it was really uh, an amazing opportunity to have this kind of dual side that she's human and a superhero and then how each affects the other and to imagine what, what that feeling is to like have the powers and then not have them is is also just emotionally interesting let's bring the rainbow bring the rainbow is that a catchphrase or something you have to like carry yourself differently you have to have a different bearing so i did train a lot but um there's also a lot of movie magic of course involved in in the transformation it's just my first bad guy you never forget your first in hollywood i'm rick damagella if you've been looking to add a pet to your home, you may want to consider the empty sh the shelters event. More than 20 shelters are taking part here in Texas, including the San Antonio Humane Society and San Antonio Pets Alive. Starting July 11th, adoption fees will be reduced. We have all the details on KSAT.com. Just click on this article. Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, San Antonio police looking for the driver of a truck who hit and killed a woman while uh, a man rather while he was riding his bike last night over on the city's west side and trans guy construction has been our big problem this morning and take a look at a long line of cars that are stopped or barely moving a loop for tenant mccullough we'll get the latest from stephen cavazos coming up in a matter of minutes
Legendary actor James Caan has passed away at the age of 82. We're going to have a look at his life and legacy. And by now, there's a chance you've seen the latest season of Stranger Things, but Netflix has a new feature that may want you, want you, uh, have you want to watch it again. We will explain. And taking a look outside with live cam. Interesting look out there for now. We're at 78 degrees and expected to get very warm this weekend. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning, too. It is Friday, July 8th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, hope you have some indoor plans this weekend. All indoors. Extreme heat is settling in. As a matter of fact, the National Weather Service has done something a little unusual. Mike says we've got a, a July heat advisory to talk about. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, when we've been up in these temperatures so long, they don't. But there are certain, you know, criteria as far as the temperature. The, the heat index, how long it's going to be um, or how hot it's going to be staying overnight. So all these different things come into to play. So yes, there is a, a heat advisory that has been issued. First of all, as you can see, the sun is starting to break through those clouds, which Boy, it's one of those days where you don't want the sun to come up necessarily because that is just going to, to obviously begin the heating process. But heat advisory goes into effect at noon up until 8 o'clock tonight. Obviously, it stays very, very hot even in through the early evening hours. And it's for, call it the eastern two-thirds of our area. It does not include parts of the hill country, so it's just not going to be right at that criteria level. But still, obviously, all around the area, it is going to be dangerously hot, not only today, but also going Going into the weekend right now it feels like 82 in town 83 at Canyon Lake this is factoring in the humidity that we have and that's been the problem is that yes we do have our morning humidity but it's not dropping down as much as you'd like it to in the afternoon mold is on the low side the updated uh, counts going to be coming out in about uh, hour hour and a half or so so temperatures will stay in the upper 70s this morning and then obviously when that uh, sun comes out it is going to heat up extremely quickly and we're going to make it up into the uh, low 90s already by by noon and then add basically 10 degrees to that and that's just the air temperature and not exactly what it feels or the thermometer reading that then it actually feels like it's going to be up around 105 or even hotter than that later on today and then we're getting hotter temperatures much much higher heat index readings coming up this weekend we'll talk about that and that small chance for a couple of showers here and there and a little bit of relief but it's down the road details in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Steve Cavazos, what's going on? Well, it looks like we still have the same shot that we went to commercial break with. Mike, 410 at McCullough, let's get a closer look. Trans Guide showing us this view, and we don't like to see it. Unfortunately, we are watching the uh, traffic moving pretty slowly through there due to some road work that was taking place. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of information from Tech Stop, but we can tell you that this is already causing a massive slowdown this early in the morning. I don't like that. So let's go ahead and bring you in here to 410, where we are seeing that slowdown. Quick suggestion, let's say you're trying to get on a 280 one just exit Blanco. It's still early enough to do that and again on an Oblate Drive and you'll hit 281 right there. That's not going to cause any issues, but you'll hit some stoplights, but better than sitting in that nasty traffic that we just saw from Trans Guide. Another area that we are watching that still hasn't shown a whole lot of improvement is over here near New Braunfels, a closure in both the I-35 north and southbound lanes. Now, according to TxDOT, this should have been wrapped up by six in the morning, but we are still seeing some of the impact with crews who are working on pavement over there. This is is between Psalms Road and Ingle Road, so just keep this in mind. Construction seems to be the trending trouble this Friday morning, so it may cause a slowdown, but we're going to watch that closely and get you through your commute and maybe offer some of those alternative routes. Travel times right now, not a worry here. 28 minutes, still pretty green coming in from Seguin in the westbound lanes. About half an hour, a little more than that from Lavernia to downtown San Antonio, and a 28 minute drive if you are traveling up from Floresville. So no worry there, but always take a slow out on the roads. Back here on Trans Guide, gosh. I don't like this shot, but another thing I really don't like is saying pain at the pump, but it looks like we might finally start to receive some relief. Jonathan Cuoco is live with us this morning. Jonathan, maybe some light at the end of the tunnel here. Good morning, Stephen. Thank you. You know what? I think we are starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but more like the light at the end of the fuel pump. Any or the slightest decrease will take it. Anything to save a little bit of money. Now listen to this. AAA is reporting some of the lowest gas prices this past month from the average 451 to 427 a gallon for regular fuel. Now diesel has dropped from 
$5.10 to $5.05 a gallon. The application and website gas buddy have also reported several stations with prices under $4. That's below the Texas and national averages, which are $4.33 and $4.75. Now, right now, I'm right outside of this gas station, and gas prices here are not as low as we would like to see them, but I have to say that there are parts of town that are seeing gas prices as low as $3.89 a gallon for regular fuel. Now, the good news here, too, is that we are in a really good region of Texas, as West Texas and some areas of the panhandle are among some of the priciest for gas. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. And just into our newsroom, the White House is responding to Governor Greg Abbott's latest executive order to return migrants to border crossings. Now, in a statement to KSET, the White House says, in part, Governor Abbott's record on immigration doesn't give us confidence in what he has cooked up now. His so-called Operation Lone Star put National Guardsmen and law enforcement in dangerous situations, resulted in a logistical nightmare, needing federal rescue, and his secondary inspections of trucks crossing into Texas cost a billion dollars a week in trade at one bridge alone without turning up a single case of human or drug trafficking. We're going to continue to follow this developing story, and we have the full statement on our website at kset.com. There is big breaking news this morning. Japan's former Prime Minister, Prime Minister rather, Shinzo Abe has died after being shot while giving a campaign speech. The 67-year-old was airlifted to a hospital where officials say he was not breathing and his heart had stopped. Police did arrest a suspected gunman at the scene. We're going to have more details on this story coming up in the next half hour of GMSA. And new details on a story we first reported yesterday on GMSA. Two people dead after a fire at a northwest side apartment. Now there is a dual investigation underway after detectives found the two people found dead inside were shot. Family members tell us that Raquel Martinez and Sergio Soto were killed in the home on Waverly Avenue. The medical examiner has not officially yet said what killed them. Investigators returned to the scene after an autopsy showed they were also shot. Now, we are told that Raquel is a 51-year-old U.S. citizen who recently moved back to Texas from Mexico to provide two kids for two kids that she left behind. Soto is 39 years old. The woman and her nephew shared the home. You know, everybody loved him. He, the whole world would love him. He was, he would help everybody. All my family is devastating. It's not one, it's two. We lost. And Raquel comes from a family of 13 siblings. Many of her relatives were camped out across the street from that house waiting for answers following that fire. New testimony expected in the investigation into the school shooting in Uvalde. The Uvalde County Sheriff is now agreeing to testify in front of a Texas House committee. This comes after that committee said Sheriff Ruben Nolasco refused to testify. So now the committee has filed a notice of deposition for the sheriff. In a statement to the Uvalde New Leader News, Nolasco said he believed he cooperated with the people he believed he needed to cooperate with, like the Texas Rangers. He said he has nothing to hide. Nolasco is scheduled to testify on Monday. Meanwhile, the parents of a student who was shot but survived the massacre at Robb Elementary say they're in need of more financial assistance. Coming up next half hour, GMSA House State Senator Roland Gutierrez and Uvalde Mayor Don McLaughlin are responding. UTSA is dishing out over $6 million to help students get through the summer semester. Nearly 36,000 students have received grant money since 2020, including over 8,000 students enrolling classes this summer. Money comes from financial aid grants and covers things like tuition, books, child care, and more. In your morning consumer headlines, Philadelphia, Chicago, San Francisco, New York, among the major U.S. cities having trouble getting employees back into the office. According to the Wall Street Journal, fewer than half the number of pre-pandemic personnel are consistently heading in to work. Some companies say they'll take a tougher stance on office returns after the summer. And layoffs at Twitter, the company cutting about a third of its talent acquisition team, fewer than 100 people. It follows a hiring freeze announced in May, the same month Elon Musk paused his $44 billion deal to buy the platform, citing concerns over bots and fake accounts.
Netflix has introduced spatial audio for some of its original programming, including the latest season of Stranger Things. The feature is designed to deliver more immersive sound, especially for customers using headphones. No special surround sound or home theater equipment will be required. 610, 78 degrees. And much more to come on GMSA, including the details in an overnight hit and run on the city's west side that left one man dead. Plus, a massive fire breaks out at a flea market in Miami, Florida. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt. And a quick look outside with a live cam. We are at 78 degrees for now, which is pretty mild considering the temperatures we'll face this weekend. We go now to James Caan, a man whose TV career spanned seven decades. The actor passing away on Wednesday at the age of 82. His character is bringing to life the classic tough guy with a heart. ABC's Will Gans has more. He's the man behind misery. I don't want our spirit! Though the crew from Elf... I think we should call security. Good idea. I like to whisper too. Says James Kahn went by a different name. Jimmy the Dream. Jimmy the Dream. Born in New York City in 1940, his father, a butcher who escaped Nazi Germany, James Kahn got his start on the small screen in 1961 in an episode of Naked City. Hey, we said we were getting you a doctor, didn't we? Huh? What do you want to carry on like that for? His career would go on for six decades, well, from so Brian's song to Thief. I mean, he puts you in a box. Uh, Kahn starring it's alongside the likes of life. John Wayne in El Dorado. In sunshine and in shadow, had journeyed long, singing a song, in search of El Dorado. And Barbara Streisand in Funny Lady. <laughs> Barbara sharing this photo on social media on Thursday, writing, I'm so sorry to hear about Jimmy. He was so talented. But Khan's most famous role, Sonny Corleone in The Godfather. What did he say? What did he say? But a beep, but a bap, but a boop, but a beep. He wants us to send Michael to hear the proposition. And the promise is that the deal is so good that we can't refuse. Hey. Co-star Al Pacino saying Jimmy was my fictional brother and my lifelong friend. It's hard to believe that he won't be in the world anymore because he was so alive and daring. And now to an update on the story that we've been following closely. Over 1,000 giant African land snails have been captured in South Florida. The slimy creatures may look harmless, but they're a serious health risk to humans. The snails carry a parasite called rat lungworm, which can cause meningitis. They can also grow up to the size of a coffee mug. If snails aren't your thing, how about spiders? <laughs> Pringles <laughs> wants the kidney garden spider to be called the Pringles spider. Pringles says the spider's markings mimic their well-known mascot. An online petition started last week has had over a thousand signatures already. If it happens, Pringles says it'll give away 1,500 free cans of chips to the first 1,500 signatures. You can read all about these stories on ksat.com. Interesting. I think people would remember the name of the spider, though. I, so it looks like, oh, yeah, yeah okay, so with it? the mustache uh -huh. now, yeah. I was like, I didn't see the connection, but <laughs> I, I kind of see it now. Somebody didn't draw it on there. Apparently, that's the way it looks. That is that is the way it looks. Let's check on traffic. We've had some issues this morning, Stephen. I prefer the Pringles man with the mustache. Right? Yeah, that's how I look like during No Shave November. Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, let's get a look at traffic right now. US 90 in Ogolito. So, uh, while we are seeing some light moving traffic in a lot of these shots at Transguide, as Mark mentioned, we are seeing some issues. Check it out. 35 at FM 306, a little bit north of New Braunfels. We have a lot of construction, and that has really been the pesky issue this morning. We haven't really detected anything else other than that. And you show, we show it to you right here on the map. No crashes, no stalls but a lot of those slowdowns due to some of the work that we're seeing in the Alamo City and outside of New Braunfels. But we'll go ahead and bring you in here and show you that area that we mentioned a little bit earlier, 410 at McCulloch. Gosh, we're still seeing that slowdown. Exit Blanco Road, that's my suggestion to Oblate Drive. You'll hit 281 that way. Uh, we'll continue to look at different routes in this particular area of town, but we're hoping by the time morning rush does get here, we'll have a better update and we really won't have to use any different routes. But still seeing the slowdown up here off 35 
55. Those alternating lanes of the north and southbound are being impacted right now due to pavement work. According to TxDOT, this should have wrapped at 6 in the morning, but we are still seeing a slowdown between Psalms Road and Ingle Road. So keep that in mind if you are planning on heading out the door in the next few minutes. Also, we are looking ahead to the weekend, but also have to look ahead to Monday. 281 on the north side of San Antonio. We will see some bridge work continuing to take place. I can already hear David Sears groaning about that because that is a big problem spot for a lot of drivers that are commuting from Bolverde. But keep this in mind, 8 in the evening to 8 in the morning, full closure of the Overlook Parkway intersection. But if you want to keep, keep updated to all the closures, scan this QR code by opening your camera app and tapping the center of your screen. That's taking you directly to the KSAT traffic page. And you know the drill. It takes you directly to all the closures that are impacting your drive time. Just remember to scroll to the bottom of the page. Yeah, we almost always know how 281 is doing yes. later in the morning because David Sears comes down 281 yes. from the Canyon Lake area on his way to work. <laughs> yes. yes, he gives us the updates. He's yes, our he 281 does. reporter. Yes, very yes. vocal. <laughs> I, I love the days where he's like, today it took me an hour. Yes. <laughs> you know, one other spot that's been under construction for a long time, the St. Mary's Strip. Yeah. Oh, it yes. looks like that they were doing some other work on mm -hmm. it that may be starting to uh, get toward paving it. Yeah, that yeah. would be great. Progress is good. Yeah, yeah, it's been a lot of work there. Yeah, long time. So, yeah. all right. Um, outside, it is just it's so it's hot and humid. I mean, there's no way other way to uh, describe it. 79 degrees right now. We are five above normal, and then you have to add. Um, about three, four degrees to that with those dew points up in the uh, low 70s. And that's what it actually feels like when you step outside. Wind out of the south primarily about 5, 10 miles per hour. And uh, cute picture right here. The cats, the chickens all hiding in the shade under the oak tree. And kind of on the serious side of that, yeah, that's where you want to be in the shade. All the temperatures that we talk about are taken in the shade. If you're in the direct sun, it just adds to it. You're not only feeling the air temperature, but also the sun is heating you up. The problem with this, though, or the problem we're going to be facing, though, is even in the shade, it is going to be so very hot with the heat index. You're not going to be able to get really any relief in the shade, if you will, because we'll still have humidity hanging around here. So it's going to be feeling even hotter than the air temperature. So we will get up into the low 80s in the next couple of hours. Sun is already squeezing through the, uh, the clouds out there. 92 at noon, mid upper 90s early afternoon, and we're going to be topping off at 102. And really from, you know, mid afternoon all the way in through the evening hours, we're still going to be up in triple digit range. Then again, you put the uh, humidity on top of that and it's going to feel like 106 today. That's the forecast heat index. Basically, it's kind of saying how poorly your body cools itself, even if you're in the shade and because of that humidity, you really can't cool down all that easily. 111 in Catula as well as in Victoria, 109 forecast heat index in uh, over there along the uh, Eagle Pass along the river. So we've got um, nothing really going on today. Tomorrow we will see or at least the chance for one or two of those showers to pop up in the afternoon. Some little disturbances that are sliding on in here. And again, this despite the fact that these are a couple of the hottest days tomorrow and then especially on Sunday. And Sunday will be the hottest, but also a couple of those showers are going to be popping up around the area. Just one or two of them. Again, this model kind of, you know, painted in with a broad brush. It's not going to be everywhere. It's going to be sort of a, a rarity if you see anything on Sunday. Then we get into the middle portion of the week and and we've got some weak disturbances sliding on in here, and that's going to give us at least a slightly better chance. I'm talking slight and slightly lower temperatures by the middle of the week. So it's not going to be any huge drought breaker at all. It's not really going to be a, a heat breaker, but a couple of degrees better than anything. Better than nothing, I should say. 92 at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 102 today, but then add four, five, six degrees to that, and that's what it will feel like well above 105. And that's why there's a heat advisory been issued. Goes into effect at noon up until 8 o'clock for the eastern two-thirds of the area. And even where you don't have a heat advisory posted, Obviously, you got to take it easy and watch the heat and more heat advisories are likely to be posted. Even excessive heat warnings on Sunday for a good chunk of the area. Those are the records, those small uh, numbers on top. So a few of those records are definitely going to be in jeopardy this weekend. 105 on Sunday. Heat index is going to be up around 110 or higher than that throughout a good chunk of the area. And then that small chance for some rain middle of the week. A, a shower or two here or there tomorrow, Sunday, but uh, middle of the week little break in the action. Do you guys see what was on Transcad this morning? Mm -hmm. That warning, never leave a child, never leave a pet oh, inside a car. Yes. 
any time. Very dangerous. Cracked windows don't count. That doesn't, nope. that doesn't matter at Never. all. Never. So. Nope. 622, 78 degrees on your Friday. And Thor is getting ready to smash the weekend box office. Just ahead, an early preview from our GMSA crew. So that's the ex-girlfriend, is it? The old ex-girlfriend. Judy Foster. Jane Foster. The one that got away. The one that got away. And here's a look at how this movie is doing on RottenTomatoes.com. So far it has a 68% from critics and 85% from moviegoers. Yeah, we're talking about Thor Love and Thunder, by the way. One of the morning editors, Tim Stewart here at KSAT, didn't get much sleep because he went and saw it. He said Love and Thunder was a blast. He said this addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe is equal parts comedy and superhero movie. He says some of the greatest moments come from characters that weren't even characters at all. Interesting. Now, Tim also says Christian Bale did an amazing job playing the unhinged villain in that Thor and the Asgardians, right, lived up to their reputation. Now, writer-director Taiki Waititi's genius is thunderously evident as surprises just kept coming. So our editor, Tim, gives us four and a quarter stars out of five. He says it's definitely the summer fun film about space Vikings that will smash the box office. <laughs> That's so Tim. Yeah. Uh, P.S. He also reminds you to stick around for the mid and post credit wow. scenes. Very good. Well, okay. Look forward to that. Thank you to Tim Stewart. Yeah, good review. Time now, 626 and 78 degrees for now. Well, ahead in the next half hour, GMS area, the very latest this morning on the late breaking news from Japan. Their former prime minister shot and killed while giving a speech. How other nations' leaders are responding to the death of Shinzo Abe. Breaking overnight, Japan's former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe shot and killed while giving a campaign speech. We'll have the latest details. And a man is dead this morning after being hit by a truck on San Antonio's west side last night. The person who hit him still on the run. We're going to tell you how police hope to find that driver. Flames break out at a flea market in South Florida. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt. And taking a look outside with a live cam. Happy Friday. We are at a nice calm 78 degrees for now and a good morning to you it is friday it is july 8th we're going to talk to mike about a heat advisory that's going in effect for most of the weekend coming up that's right but first let's go ahead and check in with stephen cavazos we've been talking about construction all morning long mark and steph let's take a look 35 at fm 306 this is just a smidge north of new Braunfels, not too far but you can see we are still seeing some of those barriers out there are uh, due to some work that's been done this is actually not really causing any issues for drivers you can see as trans God shows us they're making it there without any trouble but always be prepared because we still see somewhat of a slowdown this is in the southbound lanes of 35 not far from watson lane east again where you should be seeing that barrier removal uh, taking place but hopefully it won't really cause much of an issue for drivers that are getting their day started but still seeing somewhat of a slowdown as we take you a little bit further down south of new Braunfels, a closure in the alternating is led to uh, the 35 north and southbound lanes being impacted this is between psalms road and ingle road that should have wrapped at six this morning we are still seeing the slowdown so it's not necessarily something we want to see, but it looks like it could be somewhat improving versus what we showed you earlier. Now let's go ahead and give you a wide look at the metro area. Again, the big talking point today has just been a lot of that construction. So we're going to continue to break that down for you. But if your travels are taking you right here to the Alamo City, no delays here just yet. 28 minutes on I-37. If you're traveling in from Pleasanton in those northbound lanes in about half an hour on Highway 90 coming in those eastbound lanes from Castroville and your arrival from Lytle, 16 minutes on I-35 northbound. So no trouble there, but back here on Transguide, hopefully this won't cause any issues for drivers. But Mike Osterhage, we know that it's just been hot, hot, hot. What else can you expect? Well, it, it is going to be getting hotter this weekend, especially. And the Weather Service has issued a heat advisory. This is in effect for today. Day goes into effect actually at noon up until eight o'clock for the eastern two thirds of the area. But the one thing I want to emphasize, just because uh, certain counties in the in the hill country aren't under a formal heat advisory, obviously it's going to be just brutally hot and dangerously hot everywhere and that's going to be the situation this weekend as well. So we've got some of our morning clouds hanging around here right now. Temperature is at 79. That is still five degrees above normal and the humidity is actually a little higher this morning. Dew points are up a couple of degrees compared to the past couple of days and that's also one of the problems. Yes, it is very just 
ridiculously hot in the afternoon, but it's not cooling down all that much in the overnight hours. Wind is out of the south primarily at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And heat index readings right now, what it actually feels like when you're outside, 83 Canyon Lake, 82 at the airport, same thing Casterville, and 81 right now Stinson as well as Pleasanton. Mold is on the low side. And throughout the rest of today, obviously warm and humid this morning, and then just blistering hot today. Over the weekend, it does get even hotter and more advisories and even some excessive heat warnings are likely going to be issued. The Weather Service was uh, talking about that earlier this morning, that they're going to be issuing those over the weekend, especially on Sunday, because that's going to be the worst day as far as the heat is concerned. Still hot starting off next week and then hopefully again, we're still keeping our fingers crossed for a glimmer of hope middle of next week, mid to late next week, and even a shower too is possible, not likely, but possible over the weekend. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, a man is dead after he was hit by a truck on the city's west side overnight. Now, this happened right after 10 last night on South Rosillo Street near Saunders and South Zarzamora. And that's where police say the man was riding his bicycle when he was hit. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. We were told the truck driver who hit him ran a stop sign and did not stop to help. That person is still on the run. Right now, officers are reviewing video from a security camera on a nearby house to try and find him. The big breaking news this morning, former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has died after being shot in the back during a campaign speech. Abe was in western Japan campaigning ahead of this weekend's election for the parliament's upper house when gut shots rang out across the world. An outpouring of condolences coming into Japan this morning. ABC's M. Wen has the latest from Washington. This morning, the shooting of Japan's former prime minister Shinzo Abe sending shockwaves across the country. Around 11.30 a.m. local time, the 67-year-old ex-leader was giving a campaign speech in the western city of Nara, according to the public broadcaster NHK, when a man reportedly shot him from behind with what appeared to be a homemade firearm described as a shotgun. Witnesses say they heard two shots. After the second shot, we could see the gunpowder and a lot of white smoke. After the second shot, Mr. Abe collapsed and people were applying. CPR. Abe seen clutching his chest with security guards running to his side. He was rushed to the hospital. Video shows security tackling the suspected gunman. Officials identifying him as a 41-year-old. Witnesses saying he made no attempt to flee. He was not running away. He wasn't attempting to, to run away. He was just standing there. Abe was the longest serving prime minister in Japan's history, often outspoken on strengthening Japan's military and the country's role in foreign affairs. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken at G20 meetings overseas sending his condolences. Our thoughts, our prayers are with him, with his family, with the people of Japan. Uh, this is uh, a very, very uh, sad moment. The attack stunning a country with some of the strictest gun laws in the world. Japan, with a population of more than 127 million, rarely experiences more than 10 deaths per year from gun violence. The U.S. ambassador... And that was M. Wynn reporting. Also happening today, President Joe Biden will take executive action to protect access to abortion. It comes as he faces mounting pressure for Democrats to be more forceful on the subject after the Supreme Court made its decision about the procedure two weeks ago. He is expected to formalize instructions to the Departments of Justice and Health and Human Services to push back on efforts to limit the ability of women to access federally approved abortion medication or services. President Biden is scheduled to deliver remarks around 1030 this morning. We'll bring you the latest here on KSAT. And parents of a student who was shot but survived the massacre at Robb Elementary say they're in need of more financial assistance. In reaction, State Senator Roland Gutierrez and New Valley Mayor Don McLaughlin have asked the Texas Department of Emergency Management to take over victim services from the Uvalde District Attorney. Through the Victims of a Violent Crime Act, families can get a maximum of $50,000. Now, the family our crew spoke with wish to stay anonymous but say they have only received $1,400. We're lost. We don't know who to ask. We don't know where to go to. Our savings is already gone. Almost gone. So I mean, 
like I was saying earlier, I got I to gotta get back to work. And as for the Rob School Fund that's collecting money for families, Senator Gutierrez's office says that those funds will not be distributed until August or September. At least one man is hurt. Several animals are dead this morning after flames broke out at a flea market in South Florida. In the video, you can see dark smoke billowing from the Tropicana flea market in Miami after multiple tents there went up in flames. Crews say one tent was fully engulfed when they got there. And from there, the fire quickly spread to multiple tents and then to a nearby warehouse where many animals were killed. At this time, it's not clear what sparked that fire. Back here at home, flames tore through four homes near Houston and Geevers on the city's east side. Around 8 o'clock last night, all four people inside were found alive, but they lost everything, so now the Red Cross is helping them. Investigators trying to figure out what started the fire. And time now, 638, and we're at 78 degrees for now. Ahead on Good Morning America, major retailers are about to launch some major summer sales. Target deal days start Monday. Amazon Prime Day is Tuesday and Wednesday, and other retailers are joining in with their own deals. Coming up at 7, a simple way to know when the items you want go on sale. And after the break... It's a Fredericksburg winery with a 4,000-pound rhino on it. I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up on GMSA, we introduce you to Blake and the mission behind this preserve. And welcome back. It is 642. So you combine a winery with a rhino and you get a rhinery. A rhinery, yeah. That's the name of a recently opened vineyard up in Fredericksburg. It also doubles as a rhino preserve. And our Sarah Costa spoke with the owner about their mission to help protect southern white rhinos. Rhinery. A winery that's also the home to Blake, a four-year-old southern white rhinoceros. The concept came after the owner, Craig Stevens, witnessed a devastating loss. So uh, about six years ago, my wife and I went on safari to South Africa, and two rhinos were poached uh, while we were there. Stevens says they knew they wanted to help. Uh, seeing the military-style surveillance and guards that are around, we realized that poaching is not going to stop, and what can we do in the United States to help rhino conservation? It's what sparked Rhinory. Stephen says he and his wife always wanted to open a winery, and having over 50 acres of land for the vineyard became a perfect place for a rhino preserve, where guests can sip wine and enjoy Blake from the tasting room or nearby picnic tables. Here we educate people about rhinos. Uh, we give them a unique experience, uh, not only being close to Blake, but we also do rhino experiences where they get to meet Blake and combining that with a great wine experience. Blake is part of the American Species Survival Plan. The SSP works to ensure the survival of threatened or endangered species in zoos, aquariums, or specialized preserves like winery. In the wild, these guys are not surviving past their 20s. Christine Bobco has worked with rhinos for over 30 years at the San Antonio Zoo and Denver Zoo. She says it's a dream job to run her own rhino preservation program. A portion of all of our proceeds, which include our guest encounters and all of our merchandise, all of that goes back to the International Rhino Foundation. And why that's so important is IRF actually supports all five species of rhino. Blake is 4,000 pounds. He eats 100 pounds a day, but still needs to gain 2,000 more pounds before he can have a female partner. He's got a few years until he gets a girlfriend, but uh, we can potentially uh, bring some other rhino in and get a breeding program going. Until then, Stephen says they hope to bring in another male companion and build their rhino population. He's just such a great rhino with a, a great personality that he loves to interact with people and he's, he's kind of a ham. So he's, he's living a really good life. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. And tomorrow on GMSA, Sarah is going to share more about her experience there, so be sure to tune in. Let's check on the roads at quarter to seven. Here's Stephen Cavazos with an update. I just like how he, they, they have to wait for before he gets a girlfriend, but they're going to bring in a buddy for him yeah, in the meantime. That's, that's good. He's friends. cute. Yeah. yeah, friends all the way. All right, let's get a look at the roadway for our friends, our viewers. Uh, this morning, as you can see, that we're really not encountering a whole lot of issues that are going to slow you down. But it, it has been a morning of construction, so keep that in mind. Some of the areas are improving. We are not seeing slowdowns anymore, but we are starting to see some issues out there. Road debris detected not far from Ingram Park.
Park Mall, Loop 410 northbound there at Ingram Road. It's not causing issues, but as always, as you get out on the roadway, make sure you stay alert and prepare for any possible slowdowns because we've been seeing that over here off 35 in the north and southbound lanes. But again, this started, uh, we should have been wrapped up by six this morning, but it does look like we are seeing a lot of improvement versus what we showed you earlier in the newscast. Closure there, alternating I-35 main lanes. That's the north and southbound. We're closed at this time between Salms Road and Ingle Road. Again, that should have wrapped at six, but looks like we finally are seeing some relief there. Wider look at the map just shows it's been a morning of construction. We saw some slowdowns off of 410. That work is complete, so drivers are making their way through without any trouble. Back here on Transguide looks pretty good as well. Guys, agree. I like the fact that he has to gain 2,000 pounds yeah. his girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. You usually you got to lose Yeah, the most of us have to lose <laughs> weight before you start dating, right? I love when Mike says what we're all thinking. Yes. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, he must feel at home in this weather like sub Saharan oh, Africa right? out there. Uh, we've got our morning clouds hanging around and 79 degrees right now. That's five above the normal average low temperature this time of year. Same thing, Casterville, Port SA, 79 up the road at uh, Canyon Lake. And and uh, throughout the day, we are going to be up around, and I've got the wrong show popped in here as of right now. My apologies with that, but we are going to be up around 102 later on today, 92 at noon. And it is only going to be getting hotter. We do have a heat advisory that uh, has been issued, goes into effect at noon today up until 8 o'clock tonight. So we're already going to be up around uh, by noon, up in the low 90s, and then getting up mid-upper 90s. And a good chunk of time from roughly 3 o'clock until 6 or so, we're going to be at triple-digit range. And the other thing on top of that, obviously, we're going to have the, the humidity to deal with. And so that's going to put the heat index well up above. 105 to 110, even higher than that in some areas, especially down to the uh, south around Catula over toward Victoria. The other thing to emphasize is even though we don't have formal heat advisories posted in portions of the hill country out to the west, it's still going to be just brutally hot out there. And also, we're going to be seeing a lot more of these over the weekend. The Weather Service has already indicated that more heat advisories are likely, including excessive heat warnings. That's that uh, kind of purplish area well up there northeast of Austin. But excessive heat warnings are likely going to be issued for Sunday around here because we are going to be seeing uh, temperatures, some of the, well, tying the hottest so far this year. We hit 105 back in June at one point. We're going to be hitting that again on Sunday. But difference being... If I recall back in June, we had lower humidity in the afternoon. Right. We were getting that good 24 hour cycle. Well, that's been the problem, especially this week, is the humidity has stayed up enough in the afternoon to really be almost overwhelming when you step outside. And that's definitely going to be the situation. So we're going to be seeing heat index readings on Sunday, 110 and higher than that. And that's going to be here in town. The top numbers wow. there are the records. Mm -hmm. So a couple of those are in jeopardy. We'll yes, still be. 104 on Monday, 102 Tuesday, and hopefully a little bit, um, dare I say, cooler, not as hot right. on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and a slight chance for rain. There could be a shower popping up tomorrow in the afternoon, Sunday in the afternoon, kind of doubtful, but yeah. I mean, Wasn't it a Sunday the last time we saw 105? If I remember I, correctly. It was the correctly. 12th. I believe, which was a Sunday. Yes, indeed. Okay, well, here mm -hmm. we go again. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mike. About 10 till 78 degrees. And do you have a complaint? Well, for me, it's the heat. <laughs> anyway, while complaining may not work, sharing your grievances the right way may actually work in your favor. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to have some tips. And outside with live cam, getting your Friday going here on GMSA. And here's a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're following the breaking news on former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe shot while giving a speech and a suspect now in custody. We're going to have the latest on that investigation. And the big monthly jobs report is out this morning, a key indicator of where the economy might be headed and if a recession may be coming. That and so much more right here on GMA. With thyroid eye disease, my whole world became about my eyes. I hid my bulging eyes, and double vision made things look like this. But then my doctor recommended Tebeza, a prescription medicine that treats thyroid eye disease. With my symptoms under control, things are really opening up. In a clinical study, nearly 7 out of 10 patients taking Tebeza saw improvements in double vision, and more than 8 out of 10 patients had less eye bulging. 
Tepeza is an infused medicine. Patients taking Tepeza may experience infusion reactions. Tell your doctor right away if you have symptoms such as high blood pressure, fast heartbeat, shortness of breath, or muscle pain. Before receiving Tepeza, tell your doctor if you have diabetes, inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, or are pregnant or planning to become pregnant. Tepeza may raise your blood sugar even if you do not have diabetes and may worsen IBD such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. My world is more than just my eyes. Ask your doctor about Tepeza and visit mytepeza.com to see Jeannie before and after photos. A reminder happening today, President Biden will take executive action to protect access to abortion. Comes as he faces mounting pressure from Democrats to be more forceful on the subject after the Supreme Court made its decision on Roe v. Wade two weeks ago. He is expected to formalize instructions to the Departments of Justice and Health and Human Services to push back on efforts to limit the ability of women to access federally approved abortion medication or services. President Biden scheduled to deliver remarks around 1030 this morning. We're going to bring you the latest right here on KSAT. And happening tomorrow, if you're looking to get rid of furniture, old mattresses, you can take it to several landfills for landfill day. Starts at 8 and is completely free. All you need is a picture ID and a recent local utility bill. You can also get rid of appliances, water heaters, toilets, carpet, and up to six tires. We have a list of locations at ksat.com. And time now, 6.55. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos this Friday morning. Smooth sailing as we are getting ready to drive off into the weekend. If your commute is going to take you through 281 at Bassey or any of these locations at Transguide, we haven't spotted major slowdowns, but it does look like a stall may be reported there of US 90 near Nogalito, so watch out there. But other than that, it has been a pretty busy start with construction. Uh, we're seeing some of that wrapping up, but road debris over here still detected off 410 northbound at Ingram Road. Also over here, be on the lookout, a stall at 35 northbound at St. Mary Street. Seen a little bit of a slowdown there, Mike Osterhage. Thank you very much, sir. Lots of clouds hanging around here this morning and uh, we'll obviously see more sunshine by late morning. That's just going to start the, the heating process. 79 right now. Uh, same thing at Castroville. And throughout the day, we are going to be up to 92 at noon, 102 for a high temperature at about uh, four or five, six degrees to that. And that's what it's going to feel like. We have heat advisories going to affect at noon up until eight o'clock. Even if you don't have a heat advisory in your area, just take it easy, and it's going to be even hotter this weekend, 105 on Sunday. Uh, keep tabs on your neighbors, folks. That's right. Be careful this weekend, and thank you for joining us today. We'll see you back here at 9. Good Morning America's next with the death of Shinzo Abe.